Good morning, and it is morning here. It's very early in the morning. It's six o'clock, but I got a lot of work to do. And one thing I got to do today is take away this skinny pig that I fed to the to the uh, Sufan Cobra who didn't want to eat it. So I need to get that out of there today. And I'm going to give that to my. Uh, my beauty snake, if it isn't uh, too uh, rotted, it's been in there for, uh, it's been sitting in here for a day. You can see he's, a, I don't know if you can see him. Let me find the right key here. Got to forgive me this morning, it's early. There we go. I'm going to put on one of the gloves in case he gives me a hard time, tries to get out. He's already right there. Knows I'm coming in for it. In there a little bit. Just set that over there and get him locked back up. If, uh, if I try to feed it to one animal and they don't, one snake, and they don't eat it, then a lot of times if it's still good, I'll just give it to somebody else. And just because it's been sitting there for a day doesn't always mean that it's it's no good. Put him back up here on the shelf and come over here. Let me check out the guinea pig. Yeah, the guinea pig is still soft and pliable. Doesn't stink, so no reason why we can't give it to this guy if he'll take it. So this guy he just shed. Nice beautiful shed here. So we're going to offer this guinea pig to the beauty snake. See if he'll take that. He's checking it out. You want it? I just move it nice and slow. I don't want to move it too fast. Or I might scare him. I'll come up a little closer on him. He's checking it out. He's moving it a little bit more toward him. Not sure if he's going to take that or not. like you might want it. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Oh, get him. The guinea pig's going to get away. Come on, look, he's going to get away. Oh, nice. There he goes. Killing it again. Alright, so he's going to take care of that guinea pig for us. Now we're going to do the Western, Aldime, Western Diamondback Rattlesnake in Albino. He's under here in his log. This is one of the ones I love to do because he hasn't gone to the bathroom, he hasn't dirtied up his enclosure, so all I got to do is give him some fresh water and give him his mouse for the day. No, for the two weeks. Actually, not for the day. So, clean this water bowl here really quick. And again, I use the hemostats to take the water bowl in and out of the enclosure. I see that he's way over here, and the water bowl is way over here, 
but trust me he can strike from here to here with no problem so if I tried to reach in good chance I'm going to end up getting bit I'll take one of the mice we have here for him and again I don't want to scare him with it too much but I'm going to move it in he's flicking his tongue out there he's starting to come forward a little bit he knows there's food now, there he goes but I don't want to just shove it right into his face because that will make him go defensive. So now that he's actually bit that, he will let me put him back on the shelf and then he'll go ahead and eat it. Again, most snakes, um, they don't want to give up their security to eat their food. So he's going to wait until I put him back on the shelf and there's no motion by him and then he'll go ahead and he'll eat that mouse. Alright, well we didn't get as lucky today with the uh, black and white spitting cobra of course. He went to the bathroom on his paper so we're going to have to clean that and I don't know if the camera can show it but he's got a lot of venom. He spit on the glass here. So we're going to have to get him out of here, move him to a temporary holding enclosure. Again, you can get the holes in the top of here drilled so I can take this out. You hear him? He's awake. There he is. Now one thing when you deal with a spitting cobra, you don't want to look in his face. Because if you do, he's going to probably spit in your eyes. So, see if I can get a hold of this mirror. There we go. She moved this morning, but that's usually what he's always in. Get the water out of here. Paper. subscribers, the nice people watching my videos. You guys are really a positive group of people, not a negative group. At first I had a lot of negative people um, and they kind of just went away. Which is, which is what I like. I'm not normally a negative type of person. Uh, just trying to help out with some information on how I do things. Not so you don't necessarily have to do it that way. Um, but you get a lot of people who 
are very negative, are very quick to tell you, you know, what you're doing wrong, even though they've probably never in their life dealt with venomous snakes or large snakes. What you guys I said that I have is my subscribers, people who watch it, you guys are very cool. Um, I really appreciate your comments, your suggestions. I appreciate it when people tell me, you know, how much, uh, you know, they like the videos and they can't wait for the next one. It amazes me that just like this, this lady, uh, she had emailed me and she's all the way over in England. So it kind of amazes me how somebody like me can affect people all over the world. You know, you really don't think about that when you make these videos of who, who's watching you from where. Now we're going to get the black and white spitter back out of here. Again, I always bring it a little toward me as a shield, just in case they're ready there for a fight. Got both gloves on, and I'm going to hook them. Try to hook him so I can. There he comes up. That's good. I like it when they come up and out like that on their own. I like that. And we're just going to aim him back into his enclosure. Okay. Let me take off one glove. I always like to keep one glove on with the venom of the snake just in case they decide to dart or something. I can grab him if I have to. And here's his disgusting mouse. And we just get his attention. He'll grab it once we get his attention here. He realizes that's a mouse. As he gets over his stubbornness. There he goes. See, now he bit it. And I'll just lay that down here and close it up. Once you, when you're trying to feed frozen dogs, one of the things is you get to know your snakes and just like him, once he bites it, um, that's his way of saying I killed it. And again, once I put him on the shelf, he will eat it. And the last one we got for you today is my mono, one of my monocle cobras. I have three of them. Um, this is actually one of the smaller ones we have. to get him out of here. He went to the bathroom on the newspaper. So we have to change that. And he's already was raring to go before. He's right there. He's up. He's showing me his beautiful hood that he has there. Like I've said before, I love dealing with the snakes from the top and not from the front. Uh, if you watched one of my videos there, I showed you even a, just a black rat snake from the front, dealing with him in a front opening enclosure and how he got very aggressive. All right, now I just simply slide my hand, get up closer under this guy's, by his head here. Perfect. And you see, he actually even flared down. He's not as agitated. That's why I love using the gloves. Um, really a calmer way of dealing with them. Seems like uh, I was using <coughs> the rattlesnakes the other day. I was I try not to do stuff just in a quick method. I try to do it in a safe method. But the other day, um, I, was, I don't know why I was in a hurry. It shouldn't have been. But I was taking, I uh, had to move two of the rattlesnakes. One of them being the western, one of the, uh, the normal color western diamondback. And the other was the albino. So I, they were both coiled up. So I was able to, as I had showed you how to move a rattlesnake. Um, if you can get the stick under two, two parts of their coil, um, so you get two parts of their body. Uh, normally they'll stay on the stick and in this case I did it with the Western Diamondback and he did stay on the stick but um, he took two good swipes at me um, trying to, to really bite me 
I mean, he didn't succeed because I know how far to hold him away from me. But, wasn't one of the better ways, I don't know if you can hear me right now, I'm in the closet getting newspaper. Just give me one second. Sorry if you didn't hear me, I was in the closet getting newspaper. As I said, he, he, I stay far enough away, hold him far enough away, that when he does take a strike at me, he, he's probably not going to be able to get to me. But just the fact that he took those strikes at me, um, I put myself in risk, which was unnecessary. Uh, every time that I decide to just use the gloves and hold them, uh, it seems to work a whole lot better. It seems to make them calmer. And that's pretty much the goal when moving venomous snakes is to make them calmer and to keep you from getting bit. And I know a lot of people um, don't understand the gloves and they think it's very dangerous to use them. Uh, yes, people have been bitten through the gloves. But I've had the gloves struck a few times, and they seem to hold up pretty well for me. So as far as I'm concerned, the gloves are a very safe way of doing it. Um, I hold the snakes and handle the snakes in a way that uh, the gloves are a secondary precaution. I do believe that I could pick the snake up without the gloves on and still not get bit. I'm never ever going to test that theory. I've been bit once by a Western Diamondback rattlesnake and I don't plan on ever being bit again. Alright, let me put the gloves on. And stick ready. And he's right here. And one of the other things when you deal with venomous snakes is you always, always want to know exactly where that snake is before you open up the container. That's why I don't like rack systems that are lidless, that you cannot see where the snake is and you just open it up and they're wherever. Um, I don't like those. I want to know exactly where he is. Now, if he's going to come up and out, again, that's fine by me because I'll just pick him up as he comes out. If I have to go in and get him, like right here, he's going to come up and out, and that's fine. There he goes. He's happy by doing that. I'm happy by him doing that. Makes life simple for me. All right, you get him his mouse. This is our last snake we'll be feeding today. There we go. Now these guys just move around so much, the hardest part is getting his attention. Letting him know there's a mouse there. He's There he goes. There he goes. He's got it. Got it, got it, got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Fight me for it. Come on. There he goes. Beautiful. Yeah, the cobras, when you're feeding them, most of the hardest part about feeding them is, is they're like usually all moving all over the place. You just got to get their attention that um, the mouse is right here. You got to stop, smell it, and then they'll take it, you know, bite it, whichever. This guy here, he's a he's a good eater. Um, let me move the camera here for you. I'm going to put this side. You can see him back there he's got a hold of it and he will probably eat that right down with no problem <coughs> yeah he's not one that you have to uh, wait for him as you can see he grabbed it from me he held on to it um, and now you're watching him chomp it down he's pretty quick about eating his food
like I said, I, I, cobras are, are one of my favorite snakes. They're pretty awesome. Uh, they're very quick. Um, so when you deal with cobras, you also got to be very, very alert. So probably this morning, getting up so early to feed these guys so I could get to work. Uh, wasn't one of my better choices in dealing, having to deal with uh, cobras this morning, but I guess it worked out fine. I'm, I'm awake enough and uh, everybody got fed, nobody got bit, nobody got hurt, nobody got loose. And again, I don't really worry about snakes being loose on my floor because I don't let it happen. I um, don't remember the last time I ever had to deal with a snake loose on my floor. We we're talking probably 20 years ago. Uh, and it was only one time I remember it was a uh, eastern diamondback rattlesnake super quick and he just uh, come flying out of his enclosure onto the floor uh, chased him around the room and finally I uh, was able to get him back into his enclosure but that was one time and that's when I actually didn't have the gloves Okay, you see now that this guy's eating here, he's comes up, gives us a little bit of attitude now. Yep, all full now he's got his attitude back on. Alright guys, I thank you for watching this video. Um, if you like it, click the like button. If you want to see more of what we do, click the subscribe button. We love, love your comments and I do reply to any comment that is a, a question. Uh, or even if it's just you guys say something nice, I always try to say thank you. Because I mean, again, I appreciate that you watch these videos. Go. Have a good day, guys.